coming into this destination there is a swing bridge that you may have to wait for that's kind of like a drawbridge except it swings sideways Your destination is on the left. Parking is an exceptionally difficult process. However, we lucked out and we did find a spot. Welcome back to another exciting episode. Today we are at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute in Falmouth, Massachusetts. So come along with us and see what we can see. Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute is the world's premier independent organization dedicated exclusively to ocean research, technology, and education. Other than a beautiful landscape, there is plenty to do here, many, many museums, and some awesome restaurants, and so much more. Let me show you what I mean. Exploring the area and seeing the interesting architectures, we came across the Robert W. Pierce Exhibit Center, which is also a gift shop. Here you learn about the Marine Biological Laboratory, and it's named in memory of Robert W. Pierce, a former trustee of the laboratory who enjoyed sharing the Marine Biological Laboratory story with his many friends and colleagues. Colorful exhibits, designed for all ages, tell the story of the Marine Biological Laboratory and its impact on life sciences. There are some live animals, some underwater video footage, a hands-on microscope, an interactive squid, all are part of the visitor experience, plus quite a few things more. We also came across a really cool aquarium called the Woods Hole Science Aquarium. Its biggest name to fame is that it was established in 1875, making it the country's oldest public aquarium. It displays approximately 80 species of marine animals found in Northeast and Mid-Atlantic U.S. waters. The aquarium is designed for self-guided tours of the main exhibits and a behind-the-scenes look at aquarium operations. At the time of our visit, they were open Tuesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. and they were closed Sunday, Monday, and all federal holidays. It is wheelchair accessible at the aquarium's first floor and the seal enclosure area. But if you want to go to the second floor, where you see the behind the scenes area and visit the touch tank, you do have to notify the reception desk that you need wheelchair accessible assistance. In addition to the animals of the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic waters, they also have exhibit cases with bones, skulls, and teeth. And of course, information about Woods Hole science and history, fishery science, marine mammals, sea turtles, and local fish species. And in case you were wondering, the second floor touch tanks do have small fish, crabs, sea stars, whelks, shells, and egg casings. As mentioned before, they do have a harbor seal habitat. At the time we were there, unfortunately it was right after feeding, so they weren't very active, but it was still kind of cool. We got a little hungry, so we stopped by the Captain Kid restaurant, which supposedly has been open since 1849. You can witness the history of this place through their 40-foot mahogany bar, which was hand-carved in the Bowery of New York City in 1865, and through the prominent pirate mural, which was painted by the famous local artist Joe Moran in 1939. This year-round eatery doles out seafood-centric pub grub with a view of the pond and nautical-themed digs. One of the must-do things to check out is the Ocean Science Discovery Center. 
This is a research facility with public exhibits about marine life, ocean exploration, and the Titanic recovery. And here's my friend to tell you a little bit more about it. The Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution's overall mission is dedicated to advancing knowledge of the ocean and its connection with the Earth system through a sustained commitment to excellence in science, engineering, and education, and to the application of this knowledge to problems facing society. The ocean is a defining feature of our planet and crucial to life on Earth, yet it remains one of the planet's last unexplored frontiers. For this reason, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution scientists and engineers are committed to understanding all facets of the ocean as well as its complex connections with Earth's atmosphere, land, ice, seafloor, and life, including humanity. This is essential not only to advance knowledge about our planet, but also to ensure society's long-term welfare and to help guide human stewardship of the environment. Their researchers are also dedicated to training future generations of ocean science leaders, to providing unbiased information that informs public policy and decision-making, and to expanding public awareness about the importance of the global ocean and its resources. At its founding in 1930, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution joined a thriving ocean science community in the village of Woods Hole, Massachusetts that included the Marine Biological Laboratory and the National Marine Fisheries Service. At the time, the world was only a little more than 50 years removed from the first efforts to systematically study the ocean. One of their greatest contributions came even before a single building was constructed. As a result of the discussions and correspondence that surrounded planning the institution, scientists formed a vision for oceanography that foresaw experts from many fields working together on questions related to the global ocean. One that continues to the present day. The turn of the decade brought profound change to oceanography. During the war, the U.S. Navy realized that many of its operations were intimately dependent on the environment in which ships operate, and oceanographers found themselves consulted more frequently on matters of national defense. After the war, there was a period of uncertainty about oceanography's future. For a while, it appeared that the institution might return to the pre-war routine of busy summers and quiet winters. But both the direction of oceanography as a science and its economic situation had changed, as had the demand for advanced research in the United States. Well, thank you, Davis, for that great bunch of information. And if you happen to have a little bit of extra time, drive down the road to the Adnopska Lighthouse. At least I believe that's how it's pronounced. In 1829, this was the first lighthouse on the Adnopska Point at the confluence of Vineyard and Nantucket Sounds. In 1876, there was the housekeeper's house and a 40-foot tall cast iron lighthouse tower was built on the spot. And in 1888, the frontal lens was upgraded to a fourth order lens that is still in place today. Unfortunately, it was closed at the day that we were there. But boy, were the views beautiful. And I believe across the way, that is Martha's Vineyard. We don't make enough money to go over there. And that about does it for today's adventures. I hope you come back to view our future episodes. But until then, as always, have a great day.